Hey guys, today we're going to be covering how to do rendering for Maya and Blender. Now this is going to cover Blender version 3.x as well as Maya version 2018, but it should work on multiple different versions of Blender and Maya um, backwards and forward, given that they haven't changed uh, how certain systems like the, the camera and the viewport work. So we're going to start with our easy one, since this is going to pertain to probably 90% of you guys, which is how to set up your render in Blender. Now, I'm not going to talk about how to render through a camera or how to set up a camera so it can dolly or anything. That will be in a future tutorial for setting up animations and stuff. But um, we will be playing through a little clip, a little animation clip showing off our, uh, our little set, our little shop here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set our animation viewport and if if you're not there then head to your animation tab um, let me actually get the uh the magnifier up for you guys but yeah head to your animation tab up here and in this second viewport right here we need to select the camera that we're going to be rendering through if it's not already selected now what you can do if it isn't is you can click this little hamburger menu if there's no hamburger menu, it should be view. And we want to go to cameras and we want to go to active camera. And that's going to snap us into the active camera. So since my camera is uh, animated, we can see it as we scrub the timeline, uh, performance, rotations, and tilts and whatnot. Now over here, since I have a skybox, I do want to set the renderer, but we don't see the skybox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, this one back face calling, that way it can scroll out, take a look at where the camera is. I'm just going to kind of make sure everything's set up in place so that I have a good view. There we go, that looks absolutely perfect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look over here at our control panel on the far right. And that's where it should be for all of you guys by default. And we're going to go up to here to this little camera right here. I'm going to click that one first. And we're going to make sure our render engine is set to workbench. Now you can use other render engines, especially if you have shaders that you've gotten either online or made yourself. Um, you can use other render engines that fit you. But this tutorial is going to mainly cover just rendering from workbench, which is going to be a one-to-one -to, -one to our viewport right here. Now, if your viewport isn't shaded like this, what I want you to do is, and we've talked about this in a previous tutorial, go up to this little drop down right here next to the, the three spheres. Make sure this middle one is selected. And you want to select flat, textured, and if you need it, back face culling. You can even turn outline off if you, uh, if you don't want a thin black outline around certain objects. So the reason why I need back face culling here is uh, for both the skybox, just in case our camera clips outside of it, and because uh, we want the walls that are uh, facing with the camera or um, the camera being between the camera and the set. We want those walls to be invisible for us for the meantime. So once we have that set here as well, because this is going to be exactly the same way as setting it, your viewport, you want to make sure everything, your render and your viewport, no anti-aliasing. Your lighting is flat. Your colors are texture, back face culling. And if you, if you want it or don't, once again, outline and back face culling. It just depends on your set. And we're going to go down to here and go into color management. We're going to set, set it to standard if it's not. By default, it's usually um, filmic. So we always set it to standard. And you can pick between medium and medium high contrast. And this will just kind of do a real like quick and dirty um, color correction for us so that what we see in the viewport is what gets spit out. And it looks nice and bright and happy instead of uh, kind of desaturated and muggy. So once we're done with that, we're going to go down to this little printer option right here. And we're going to select our resolution. I use 640 by 480 because that's the same output resolution for uh, standard definition. 
and that's how I get my uh, chonky pixels whenever I do my low poly render. You can do something lower, like half res of this, which is 320 by uh, 240. Um, but uh, I wouldn't recommend going higher than this just because uh, you will lose those, uh, those chonky pixels. And of course, you can perform any upscaling that you want in your uh, composition program like Premiere. A frame rate to 24 if you're animated. If you're not animated, then don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about any of this. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to set our output and we're going to set our destination. I have a destination right here already set, but uh, I want to kind of change change this to something else. So we're going to select our little menu prompt. I'm going to step out and find our uh, our folder, and that's going to be right here, our indoors folder. So once you have that prompt set, um, you're going to want to set a name at the end of it for your file. So mine's just called shop turn underscore zero zero, which should be fine. And the next thing I want to do is set the image format. Now, by default, it's going to be something like a, either PNG or AVI. And uh, depending on how you want to composite it is depending on what you're going to do. So for me, I'm not going to composite it into a GIF. I just want to show you guys how it's done. I'm going to press FFmpeg. But uh, I recommend you guys always pick AVI. Yeah. So. And if you want to create a GIF using a sprite, then PNG. Then you can composite it over there and actually set the uh, the per frame tick speed or uh, frame time speed. I'm going to go to encoding. I'm going to set my encoding to MPEG-4. I want to make sure that we're set on our video codec to H.264. We're going to change it from medium quality to perceptually lossless. I find that if you click lossless, it generates a, a file that isn't actually good. It uh, does not tend to work. I always like to bring the frame rate down. And this is only if it's animated to, uh, to 12. If it's not animated, then you don't need to worry about it. And then, of course, make sure my dither in post-processing is set to zero. So now we're ready to render. Now, if you're rendering a video, you're going to go all the way up to the top left corner. And before you actually do anything, hit save. Make sure you're, you're rearing and ready to go. And you don't have any unexpected crashes. Just lose all of your setup. So we're going to go to render. Now, if you want to render an image, you're going to press render image. And what that's going to do is it's going to render one frame of your image. And from here, you can go to image, save as, and you can save your image as whatever file format that you would like. But we're gonna render a video, and this one's going to work a little bit different. So we're gonna go render animation, and it's gonna play the animation for us. Just like that, and it's done. Now that it, it's at the end frame, we're gonna open it, and here we go, we have it right here. It's on the other uh, other screen. And as you can see, it worked out just right. It looks really nice. So that's how you set up your render for low poly in, um, in Blender. Now, it gets a little bit different as we move over to Maya. Okay, now over here in Maya, we're gonna have our scene completely set up and ready to go, uh, but we've got a little bit of weirdness. First off, our viewport, uh, no backface calling, and same goes for over here with our, um, so our animation view over here and our viewport, our, uh, where we can look around and check everything. Um, ignore the squished camera right there. That's uh, actually an import error. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to select our uh, our skybox, and I'm going to see if there's a way for us to turn off double sided. That way we can see it. We don't need textures on over here, um, but uh, we we could if we really wanted to. Now over here we need our backface culling because that's really going to set this so that it's exactly like our Blender render. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do two things. We're going to go over here to lighting. We're going to set it to use flat lighting. And so that's going to uh, essentially lighten up everything in the scene as if it's just all constantly lit evenly across. We're going to go up to shading and we're going to set back face culling. And that should set up our scene so that we can see everything that we need. So the next thing I do is I'm going to go over to show. I'm going to go all the way down. I'm actually going to turn off some some uh, some things such as the HUD, the grid, any manipulators. And then we want to do a uh, override viewport over here under play blast and just have polygon selected. So it looks like we're good. I think the only thing uh Yeah, the only thing we can't seem to to hide is our, our little camera pivot right here, but that's okay. It shouldn't show up in Play Blast. All right, now with uh with our whole scene set up and ready to go. And you can see I uh, quickly just uh, in a cutaway fixed any orientation issues. Um, what we're going to do now is set up for render. So let's get this over here so that we can... Looks like we're still... Yeah, so that we can see it. Make sure everything's working appropriately. Yeah, it looks good. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go up here to window and a play blast let me actually get the magnifier back now that we need it window and then down to play blast but we're going to select this little box right here it's going to ask for a start time and an end time so i'm going to set the end time to 240 that's how many frames our animation is i want to change from image to avi so that's the biggest difference between Blender and Maya is Maya primarily has either a uh, output for sequential images for you to do composition in another program or AVI and that's it. So keep that in mind, especially if you have space constraints. So I'm going to set the display size and as you can tell, I've set it right here to the exact same we have over in Blender, and uh, I want to set a save location, and here it's already set, so we're just going to call this Maya underscore shop con, that way we, we know this is ours. And we're all set up, we're going to click Play Blast, and it should Play Blast via our camera. And here we are. And as you can see, it's the exact same as our Blender. In fact, if I open them up together, let's see. Ah, uh, well, let me do double instances. Yeah, looks like we're, we're only getting one. But as you can see, if I uh, pop between the two, they look exactly the same. And there you have it. So hopefully that was easy and uh, pretty quick to set up. On one end, Maya is extremely fast to set up because it's straight up the viewport out and that's it. All you're doing is uh, a play blast, similar to uh, if any of you guys have ever gone to animation school or done an animation class, your teacher may ask for uh, play blasts instead of full renders. It's very similar to that and is very fast and efficient. Um, whereas Blender takes a little bit of time and it actually does a, a, a bit more of a, a, a formal render, but both of them are very easy to do, very quick to set up.
requires zero knowledge in shaders or complex rendering rendering output methods or rendering renderer setups so i hope this helped you guys once again thank you all so much my patreons should be scrolling right now if not have already started scrolling and uh i hope you guys enjoyed this lesson if you have any recommendations for future lessons or if there's just anything that uh, you want uh, you want to tell me that i could do better at let me know and of course uh, consider joining the patreon because it helps me learn and uh, grow with you guys and get better and i can make more tutorials because of that all right guys until the next one see you later